Jordan Poyer uh, from Astoria, Oregon. You know, I always you know, I tell people I'm from Astoria, and uh, most people are not really sure where Astoria is on the map, so I kind of tell them to look at a map and picture Oregon, and it's just the top, as far top left as Oregon as you can go. You know, describe it as the mouth of the Columbia River. It's right into the Pacific Ocean. Small town, great community. You know, people want to come here just because, you know, it's beautiful. You know, it's built on a, a big hill, you know, overlooking overlooking the water. Uh, you know, you can get up to the Astoria Column and see everything. On nice days, it's just you can't really beat the scene out here. You know, people are beautiful. Everybody, you know, everybody knows everybody. I think the a little nervous, little butterflies. Uh, I'm not sure what to expect. I thought it was gonna be a great outing. Uh, you know, I just want it to be a competitive, fun, uh, fun day. I'm golfing with my mom, golfing with my dad, uh, golfing with uh, the country clubs, pros, son, uh, Mr. Kawaso, and apparently his son is extremely good. Um, I guess he won the, the Oregon U.S. Open. So now I'm just excited to go out there. Uh, have a fun day at golf, uh, fun day seeing a lot of friendly faces that I haven't seen in a while, um, seeing a lot of supporters uh, of the community and, and of myself. So, um, you know, we're going to go out there, you know, hopefully shoot low 80s. That's the goal. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to have some fun. So. My name is Fatlai Opoyer, born in American Samoa, left Samoa when I was 10. The natural migrations of, of uh, Samoan people coming from the island, you go to Hawaii, from Hawaii you go to usually California, um, and then from there, wherever your relatives are at, that's where you're going to end up at. JP beat me yesterday. It was, uh, he shot at 84, I shot at 87, but today's another day. Uh, we're, things are different, but I did beat him in horse, so we're one-on-one -on -one right now. I went to high school in Texas, uh, played football at Colleen Ellison, went to college, <laughs> uh, met uh, the mother of my kids. Uh, she played volleyball, she's an athlete. Mother of my kids, uh, Julie, is from Oregon. So, uh, at the time, yeah, my kids' grandpa wasn't. Um, her family was here, so it, it was it was a move to to be here for her family. We were both coaching in Washington. We work in Washington. We just moved it to Astoria. First of all, when I we first drove through Astoria uh, from Texas. I drove through Astoria as we were going to Nacelle and I said, I'm never going to live here because there's nothing but hills. There's no flatlands. You know, I went to school in New Mexico. You know, I live in Texas. There's some flatlands. A couple of years later, a snowstorm and a flood later, we're living in Astoria, Oregon, man, up on the hill where <laughs> there's no water to get up there. Well, anyway. Both of them, you know, growing up, they worked at a juvenile delinquent facility. So, you know, getting away with anything wasn't wasn't easy you know um, they were both pretty you know, I like to say they're pretty strict they were very fair parents you know I would do stupid stuff and I would get you know punished for it whether it be taking my car or taking my phone for it wasn't it wasn't days you know they were taking my phone it was months you know my parents would have my phone or my keys um, that I wouldn't drive or couldn't do anything so um, you know I, I just remember 
telling my mom one year, I think it was my sophomore year, that I didn't want to play basketball. Um, she said, okay, Jordan, well, you're going to be doing nothing but coming home and doing the dishes and doing your homework when you get home, and you're not going to be going anywhere. So you can either go play basketball or you can, you're literally going to be coming home and doing nothing. So well, obviously I decided to play basketball. There's a car right here, first Jordan Porter Invitational at the Astoria Country Club. Golf with my mom, Pops, Carson Quasso. Gotta figure out how to read this. A true Astorian has Jordan in their heart. They follow his every move, every interception, every time he picks Tom Brady and runs it in the end zone, and people just go crazy and nuts for it. So, you know, he's he's Astoria is one of Astoria's favorite sons. I met Faleo a few years ago at Bubba's watching a Bills game. Uh, grew up in Buffalo, now I live on the coast down in Otis. So I got in contact with him, he told me about the golf tournament. I said, hey, we'll come up and help out. I don't golf, so I said, what can we help out with? He said, ah, come up and volunteer. So we was... Bills Mafia is famous for, uh, you know, getting rowdy and, and jumping through burning tables, but it's really about the community, and that's what Bills Mafia mainly is. So Jordan's doing a fundraiser. We're like, man, we got to rep here. Bills Mafia and We're come here, up and, and do whatever we can. So. <laughs> good, good, good. P1, man. I'm excited, a little nervous. My first time we teeing off with a group of people. So I just hope I don't shank that shit. I just want to hit. I just want to get the ball in the air right now. Let it rip. Bob, you ready? Yeah. Hey, get my good side, okay? Both of my kids were good, you know, I can't complain. Um, I was pretty hard on both of them, you know, growing up. The only way I knew how to be a father, I mean, we're not perfect parents, you know, we were still young ourselves, you know, um, trying to parent two boys. And luckily there were, you know, kids that were, they listened, you know. Um, Jordan was a neat freak when he was young. I mean, I just remember him. I mean, he grasped on the things like uh, making sure that, uh, you know, teaching him lay out his clothes for the next day of school, make sure he make his bed. I mean, those, I mean, he was, that's how he was, you know, uh, until he got a little older, started figuring out stuff, and then his room got a little messier. It's early. A lot of golf. A lot of golf. Time to pull away. I'm just saying. You know, first hole doesn't count. Well, it does. If I would have scored a birdie, it would have counted. <laughs> but, I mean, he was very competitive, you know. Um, well, that's an understatement. Our whole household was competitive, man. I think he, you know what I'm saying, I think once, you know, the, the, I think once the heat starts getting on him, I don't know if he can handle it. I don't know if he can handle it, but we'll see. You know, my dad's a good golfer. He's been golfing his whole life, so and I've seen him get hot. You know, and I, when he gets hot, it's pretty dangerous. We don't even play games in our house anymore because it was so competitive. No one wanted to lose and it wasn't fun anymore. <laughs> so after you play game, it was like, So uh, whenever Julie wants to play board game or something, I uh, just like, oh God. We both, Julie and I both had very high expectations for our kids. Uh, you know, just like any other parent would, you know, and. They adapt well wherever we went, you know, and they're kids that, you know, make friends wherever we live. And um, I'm, I'm so, we were fortunate that my, our kids, uh, both of our kids love sports. So no matter where we go playing sports, because we play sports, so wherever we play, they play. Always at my games, always support me. You know, like I said, they're very, extremely fair, but you're, you know, like I said, they're very, uh, you know, they didn't let me get away with a whole lot. And that's, you know, I'm blessed for the way that, you know, they were able to raise me. Well, a lot of golf know. less. Yep, a lot of, a lot of golf, golf less. less. There's a lot of, I mean, blow of hole could happen in any hole. 
so we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. Mm -hmm. But now I'm at a 37. We're pretty good about it. Some some shots I wish I had back, but uh, only had to drop one time. And I bogeyed the hole that I dropped, so I feel like that was a win. One one birdie, couple pars, couple shots I wish I had back. A lot of golf left. Nice shot. Uh, how you doing? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, I just want to come back in town. I see a couple. Ooh, I like it. Nine. <laughs> oh! He got him. I had never heard his name. I was considering taking the varsity baseball job, and I was driving down this street that's right there, and there was a young man with another kid, just a couple kids, you know, working on baseball uh, in a batting cage right along the baseball field. And I watched the kid swing and then just pick up a ball and throw it back to the pitcher, and I hung a U-turn, pulled up, walked up, and asked this 14 year old young man who he was and he said uh, sir I'm Jordan Poyer found out he was an eighth grader and found out that he was a football basketball baseball guy To say it was a slight incentive to maybe take the coaching job, having someone that was that noticeably good. Um, you know, after you've done it long enough and you've actually had some people make it to the major league level or get drafted or play division one, it just kind of takes a blink to see the people that are wired right to play. And little did I know that Jordan wasn't just genetically gifted, but was as coachable and as hardworking as anyone I've ever met. Oh, man. I'm trying to think right now which squad was the best. Which squad was the best? Yeah. Man, these two squads right here, 2006, 2009, we won state title both years. I was a freshman, I was a senior that year. I promised my wife that we would come here for one year, and that was 21 years ago. So we uh, are still here because the community is really a very unique and special place. People look out for each other. They truly care about each other. Um, we, we have found it's been a fantastic place to raise our children. Willie, we have a Willie, 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 we enlisted uh, his mom and dad to help get involved in starting youth football for us here. Um, and so, in fact, I can remember the first time I met Jordan's mom was uh, entering my, my first full off season. Our, um, our priority was, was to get youth football started. And so myself and at the time, uh, Brian Babbitt was one of my middle school coaches. 
we actually, uh, after meeting with some other individuals that uh, had started a league uh, in Napa, our neighboring town, we put a, basically an ad in the paper uh, for anyone that might be interested in, in youth football starting in Astoria, please come to this pizza place at 6 o'clock on this Tuesday or Wednesday night, whatever it was. And uh, Julie Poyer was one of two parents that showed up. And I think then Julie went home and told her husband, Fleo, hey, you're doing this. <laughs> Julie went to a meeting because we were trying to get him to play, both the, uh, well, Jordan at the time, because he was nine. My young one was only in kindergarten, Jeremy. Uh, but he looked like a dang third grader. So um, yeah, she went to a meeting for youth football, came back, she's like, hey, I volunteer you to help out. I said, sure. I go to the meeting, they kind of looked at me like, hey, uh, what are we doing now, coach? I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> I'm just here to help out whoever's the head coach. And they said, no, 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 you, you know, Julie said that you were, you're the, you're gonna coach. They're like, no, I'm not. <laughs> but anyway, I ended up negotiating the fact that I stopped coaching in Washington and um, decided to coach the kids here. doing everything he could to try to get Pop Warner football here in Astoria and then, you know, making it happen. I just remember, you know, all the all the helmets that we used to have, you know, all the kids used to have the face mask, you know, up at the top of the top of the helmet, but we didn't care. You know, we were out there playing football, having a good time. So, um, you know, just always at my games, always supported me. Um, you know, like I said, they're very extremely fair. Um, but you're you know, like I said, they're very uh, you know, they didn't let me get away with a whole lot and that's Right. Play one ball all day. Golf is a game that cannot be won. It can only be played. The back's not too high right now. There gotta be something. There gotta be something. You didn't do me that. On uh, 17 here. This is part three, uh, hole in one contest. The winner, thank you, Dan Gouge of Astoria Ford, donated the car here. Uh, you get a hole in one today, you get to take home a free car. Yeah, Always dude, rep it, we dude. had to, we had to. Always rep it. We had to. Bill's Mafia represents everywhere. You see him out here in Oregon. I mean, them, them boys drove two and a half hours to come out here and sit on, on 17 just to kick it. You know what I'm saying? I told them to heckle the guys behind us because the guys behind us are playing against them. They said, oh, you know, we will. Put him in. Put him in. Oh! <laughs> that was so cool. Achiever and welcome to MaxPreps.com. You are at the game presented by Burger King and we are here at Research Stadium, home of the Beavers in Corvallis, Oregon. Today is the OSAA Football State Championships for the state of Oregon. Tonight for the 4 State Championships we have Astoria Fishermen versus the Banks Braves. The Astoria Fishermen are from Astoria, Oregon. The Calpa champions are undefeated at 13-0 and are coached by Howard Rube. Astoria is playing for their first ever football championship. The Fishermen have an explosive offense, averaging 45 points a game, while the defense has held opponents to a 17-point average. Astoria is led by senior Jordan Poyer, the 6-foot, 180-pound quarterback was selected, the Coapa Offensive Player and Defensive Player of the Year. He has completed 60% of his passes for 2,135 yards and 22 touchdowns. He's rushed for 1,755 yards and 37 touchdowns. Well, Astoria is a very historic town. You heard me say it's the oldest American settlement west of the Rocky Mountains. I'm very proud of our business. We're a very small Pepsi bottler, but we're the oldest business in Oregon. 
So there is a lot of, uh, there's a lot of history here. I am the fifth generation, and my son is working in the business. He's the sixth, and then uh, he has children too, so they'll be the seventh. So we've been here a long time. The school district has always been a very strong part of the community, as has athletics. We have more state championships than any other high school in Oregon. <clears throat> it's not because of our coaching, because uh, if you can't see him on film, our head football coach is sitting here, and i got to jab him. You have to re realize we had a lot of good high school athletes then, and Jordan will be the first one to tell you. He wasn't the only one. And one, one great player can't win a state championship. So the community is very excited about our, our athletic programs anyway. And on top of some really good high school players, we have an All-American. We have an All-Universe. And you put him in there, and I mean, without exaggeration, it was like Michael Jordan. And I, I think the coaches will tell you, they could play him at any position. If they really need him at end, Running back, quarterback, linebacker, he could he could do it. So it's very interesting. Wherever there was a hole, you put Jordan Poyer, and you're gonna be you're gonna be okay. We have a little a smaller school than Astoria in a different league. They're right outside the city limits. They're part of our community. Napa High School. They won the state championship a week before the bigger schools. Astoria goes to play. Well, I'm the mayor, so I go. Let's have a parade to celebrate the two state championships. Coach Roop says, we haven't played the game yet. We're playing the number one team in the state. We're paying banks. Oh, we'll win. So I lined up a parade to celebrate the state championship before the game. Not a smart move if you want to be friends with the coaching staff. Put a little pressure on us, why don't you? So anyway, oh, we'll win. We won. That was a very close game. But we won. witnessed Jordan Boyer was when he was in Pop Warner. Uh, wore the number one. Uh, it just seemed like every time you were at uh, the field at the time, uh, he was running up the sideline for a touchdown. You already know. I'll never forget his when he was a sophomore, his first play from scrimmage or our first series, uh, he had a pick six. And ever since then, it was just sit back and watch the show. And at that time, it's funny looking back that uh, you know, all us upperclassmen thought we were taken under his wing, but what we were about to find out is that he was about to put us all on his shoulders. And it's been like that ever since. He was a human highlight reel, man. I knew he was so much better than all of us when we were like just starting to play. Like in fourth grade, he was clearly better than everybody. And then, you know, when we got into like middle school or something, it was like also to another level. <laughs> like, you know, if we're in trouble, just like, hey, can you, Bill us out on this one, man, if you would, and then, you know, he would, and we're like, oh, okay, you know, so it certainly made us relax a lot more, but high school, you know, especially when he was a senior, it was just so evident that he was so much better than everybody, and it's like, uh, eh, okay, so, yeah, it's, it's, I saw it uh, at a young age, but then also got to see it for, you know, in front of my eyes for, you know, all the way until I graduated high school. And I was like, this Use this kid, you know. It's like just dominating and everything. It's like okay, well, competition's always fun, I guess. And then come to find out, it's just didn't we didn't even know what we had, you know. It's just such a small town, you don't get the you don't get that kind of style of athlete. If that makes sense. I mean, it was it was a lot of fun. We had a lot of success, so success, you know, makes sports more fun. Jordan is younger, like so he should have been in our grade, so he would have been basically a true freshman playing at that time. Um, he was leading a team to a perfect season, and they ended up losing to, I want to say, the number one team of the state, um, so they matched up with first round of playoffs. And that was, I don't know, it was pretty eye-opening, and then going against him every day in practice, um, when he was going 70% and everybody else was going 100%, he was still better than everybody else. And I think what really stuck out to me about him was, the dude's smart. Like he, he's a great athlete, but what was separated? He he was football smart, and he would challenge us in practice. Whether what are you doing against a cover two, cover three, man press? 
he was always asking us, like I said, I was his wide receiver, so he's always asking us, what route are you running here? That previous summer, uh, prior to his eighth grade, he would show up to our passing workouts and we would sneak him in there and let him take a few snaps every once in a while, um, even as he was going into the eighth grade. He trained to, to become a professional athlete, starting at a very young age. I mean, you would drive by the school and you would see his, him out there with his brother and his dad. That's too easy. Come on. There you go. Uh, running sprints, using parachutes for resistance to run sprints. I mean, they were doing stuff at a young age that, um, you know, you just don't see every day kids uh, doing. It started off with Astoria and Binks trading off unsuccessful drives. A 49-yard pass from senior quarterback Jordan Boyer to junior receiver Alex Eterno. Late in the second quarter on the 10th drive of the game, Boyer scrambles and connects with junior receiver Marcus Brown. A 20-yard pass, and the fishermen are in the red zone. After two pitches to the left to junior running back Dane Lund and an 8-yard option run by Boyer, it's Boyer once again, this time on a keep from three yards out. Astoria is on the board. Astoria doesn't waste any time on the attack. A rush draw to the right by Lund, good for nine yards. Three plays later, and the first play of the fourth quarter. Poyer keeps it and takes it in for the score. If we want to win this game, we cannot let them score. The Astoria defense steps it up once again and they force Banks to punt. Two plays later, a deep pass to the left from Poyer to Eterno. Good for a 72 yard touchdown. The kick from Johnson is good giving the Fishermen a 16-point lead. Eight plays later, a reverse to the left by Moore. Astorius Johnson gets a hand in there and causes the fumble, which is recovered by Poyer. Fisherman ball, just over a minute left. Astoria's second play of the fumble resulted in their own. We're gonna take a knee on the first play. If they use it, I will come under and we'll run some ice on some wedge. All right? Okay. As junior linebacker, Devin Dreyer attacks Poyer. Bing's ball on the one. Linehan sneaks it in, good for the score. They go for two, and it's Linehan again, cutting into the lead. Poyer scrambles with a little amount of time left on the board, and as time runs out, so does Bing's chances as the Astoria Fishermen go undefeated on the year and win their first ever football 4A state championship. Daddy's out here spying. I wasn't even going for the whole <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, boy, oh my dude, God. Too, man. I appreciate y'all coming out. Up, What's up, bro? Uh, What's up, bro? Yeah, he was like, who are those guys? Oh, that's your linebacker, your, your receiver, your corner, and your safety. They go to Oregon really bad. Um, I just remember I had, I had Oregon everything in high school. Oregon lanyard, Oregon hats, Oregon shoes, and you know, and, you know, that Oregon was the school that everybody wanted to be at, you know. He did, I mean, we got people visiting us from like Idaho or, you know, Portland State uh, after the semifinal game. Uh, Coach Glenville and his whole entourage came to the school, and I, he, I don't know. He was, you seen Coach Rube's office, it's dark as heck in there, and he had his sunglasses on, and I'm, you know, that got my attention anyway. You know, I wasn't getting the letters from UCLA or USC or anything like that. It was, you know, I had, you know, Coach Rube was doing a lot of my recruiting. He was sending a lot of, uh, a lot of tape out, you know, I had uh, some, I had Portland State looking at me, I had um, Washington State looking at me, you know, none that, you know, Portland State gave me an offer, but you know, Idaho gave me an offer. Um, nothing big though, you know, it was nothing, nothing big that, you know, was going to be exciting, crazy exciting at the time, except Oregon State. Oregon State offered me, but they offered me 
as a gray shirt. Of course, he wanted to go to Oregon State, you know, and they offered him a gray shirt. Now, a gray shirt is, so when you go into the fall, you're considered a red shirt coming in in August. You're considered a gray shirt if you start in January uh, because they don't have a scholarship to offer you in the fall. So some seniors, they're done in the fall, and then one will be available for you in January. And that's how they offered me, telling me that I could, I could come in and do a gray shirt, and that I accepted that offer, um, you know, thinking that I was going to gray shirt. And, you know, it's crazy how things work out. You know, a dude wasn't eligible to, to make it to camp, and so they pulled his scholarship, and then they offered me, you know, that his scholarship back to come in in the fall and compete to to redshirt and you know I came in in the fall with just an open mind like you know I, I you know I was I was coming from Astoria I was a little shocked to not not shocked I won't say shocked but I was a little kind of you know wide-eyed and, and didn't know what to expect from you know kids coming from California or Portland even or you know Florida you know what I'm saying and so um, I didn't know what the competition was going to be like because I'm playing you know 4A football you know in Oregon you know you see big schools, you know, you see schools in California like modern day, you see, you know, big schools in Florida, but you know, I just came in like to say, hey, you know, just get after it. And dude, I came in there just with a whole different mindset. I just, I just wanted to prove everybody wrong. I just wanted to prove the people that didn't offer me wrong. I wanted to prove the coaches there, they're wrong, that they shouldn't offer me a gray shirt, that I should be there. And I came into camp, dude, and I was balling. Like I came into camp as a corner um, moved to safety and then I moved back to the corner and so I mean they just had me all over the place I was making plays and so I just remember coach Riley pulled me into his office probably about two weeks before the first game he said Jordan there's no way I can redshirt you he's like you just you, you too you too valuable to the team I need I mean I need you to play on on Saturdays but if you want a redshirt like he's like I'm not gonna take that from you and he's like and I understand Coach, like, you know, I, I want to play. Like, you damn right I'll play. Like, what What you need me to do? Like, you know, so I was at all four phase special teams, uh, came in on, you know, third down situations um, as, a, as a freshman. Um, you know, I, was, I played well. Uh, as a sophomore, you know, finally started uh, at corner. And, you know, from there on is history, dude. I was all consensus All-American by my senior year. End up with 14 picks um, by the time I, by the time I, 13 picks, sorry, by the time I finish. Every week we give Oregon State cornerback Jordan Poyer the microphone and let him do his thing. This week, it was move-in week for Oregon State freshman. Classes start on Monday, so Poyer went around to meet some of his newest classmates. Here's this week's episode of the Jordan Poyer Show. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's intercepted by Poyer, right side, Jordan Poyer! Poyer, everybody down here, pouncing on it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Jordan Poyer Show. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the third Jordan Poyer Show. Thank you for tuning in. We are here at beautiful Oregon State campus. Today we have a special show for you. You know, we're going to walk around and talk to people. So we're here to talk about athletics. Do you have a favorite team um, at OSU that you like watching? Football. A favorite player on the team? Mm -mm. No? No. Jordan Poyer. Jordan Poyer. Jordan Poyer. <laughs> hmm. All of them. All of them are really good. You have to name one. You're a football player, yeah? You, Poyer. Right. Oh, you know, I swear I didn't tell her. Class starts on Monday. People are struggling to get go get their books, get their classes, get find where their classes are. And yeah, I, you need to help me find my classes. I need to help you find your classes. Where, where's what hall do you are you? I need Winnegar. Oh, see, I've been here four years and I still get lost. Winnegar is somewhere. <laughs> I'm I'm almost like 100% sure like it's that way. But don't quote me on that. Nice meeting, nice meeting you too. I don't know where Winnegar is. I hope she finds it. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. We just toured Oregon State University, kinda. Talked to a lot of the freshmen about their thoughts on Oregon State Beavers um, athletics, you know, what they thought about Research Stadium, Guild Coliseum, just their whole experience here so far at Oregon State. Um, tune in next week for a whole new show, and I wanted to bring it out. If you have any ideas about what you want to be on this show, just tweet me, J underscore Poyer 14. Um, tweet me your ideas, tweet me your thoughts about the show, what I can do differently. I would love to help, help you guys out, make the show a lot more better for you guys. And uh, thank you. Go Bees. Gentlemen. It's intercepted by Poyer, right side, Jordan Poyer! Poyer, everybody down here, pouncing on it. He's really talented. He, he did a nice job.
had high expectations for myself going into the draft. Um, not as high as, you know, going number one or number two round, but, you know, I was thinking anywhere from the third to the fifth round that I could possibly land uh, for somebody who actually, you know, in, 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 in those rounds, that's where kind of somebody wants you, you know, to be there. They see something valuable in you. Um, to me, like the sixth and seventh round, it's just kind of, they just, it's almost the best player off the board. If he just get drafted, I'll be happy, you know, and, but when his name wasn't called, I, I could, I mean, I, I felt for him, you know, like I was pissed and I was hurt. Shoot, the next day, he didn't get called again. I called Zeke. <laughs> I called his agent. Like, what the hell is going on? I just remember being with my family and friends on the second day when I thought, you know, I was going to get drafted and didn't work out and I was just super bummed. Um, so at that point, I just thought that I might not, I, I might not even get drafted. You know, it's like, hey, we don't know why he's dropping. Got to talk to him on the phone. Of course, we were both crying, and I was like, man, all you need, just like any other time in your life, you know, you play with a chip on your shoulder, and you, all you need is an opportunity. So the third day, I, I got the call from, you know, Philadelphia. Chip Kelly got on the phone. Um, he couldn't believe that I, I didn't get drafted yet, and he said, we're going to take you and, you know, pick 218 that we have. Uh, so pack your bags, you're ready to come to Philly. And, you know, that moment right there, it's pretty special, you know, just knowing that, you know, I had an opportunity to be in the league. But, you know, I was still pretty pissed. You know, I was, I was pissed that, um, you know, so many – so many players, and even I look now, like so there's so many players that are picked ahead of me that are just not out the league, that ain't been in the league for years. You know what I mean? And it just, you know, it, and you know, it's kind of still been like that since I've been in the league, you know, being the overlooked one or being whatever you want to call it, you know. At this point, I don't give a damn, you know, what people think about me as a person or as a player. I'm going to do what I do on the football field anyway. And so and let my game speak for itself because my game has spoke, spoken for itself since I've been in the league. You know, you can say whatever you want the last four, the, the first four years, but the last four years, you know, I've been one of the top safeties in this league. So, um, you know, that's just, it, it, I've been an underdog my whole life, man. And so it, it ain't nothing new for me to see, um, see people project, you know, their numbers or project their opinions on who is this or who is that. Um, I know what I've done in this game, and I know what I'm going to continue to do in this game. That's the, all that matters to me. Uh, I look back, and I was probably one of the hardest, say probably one of the hardest, uh, one of them, um, like times, I guess you could say, of my, my lives. Yeah, I'd never been to the East Coast before um, going to Philadelphia. I, uh, I didn't know what to expect. I was going on a team with... Michael Vick with LaShawn McCoy, with Deshaun Jackson, you know, um, just some some dudes that have been established in the league a long time and guys who I played up with on Madden all the time, you know. And I was just kind of, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I just knew I, that I always go back on one thing. I always know I always fall back like when I'm when I'm in a new setting or when I'm in a new uh, area, just put your head down and work, you know, that's it. Just end of the day, no matter what anybody says, no matter what anybody does, just put your head down, be on time um, and, 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 and work. Uh, you know, don't make the same mistakes twice. You It's football, you're gonna make mistakes. Don't make the same mistakes twice, you know. Um, be coachable, just trying to do all the right things in order to build trust. I think that's a huge key when you get to the league is starting to build that trust with not only your coaches, but your teammates around you. And so, um, you know, just trying to build that trust with the guys around me. And I, and, and it was, it, you know, it, it was a good experience. You know, it was tough because, you know, it, it was just a tough time in Philadelphia, dude. Uh, I made the team, um, but, you know, I would dress one week. I would, I would not dress the next week. I would dress one other week. And then week six came around and, you know, I got, I got released by Philadelphia. And everything happens for a reason. I mean, just like everything else, from the draft, him getting picked. I mean, everything happens for a reason, you know, and, and that I'm going to continue to pray for him and, you know, just have faith that everything is going to work out. You just continue to grind and work hard. Um, the message does not change. I mean, it's still the same from 
you know, when, when they were young. Uh, you know, and uh, yeah, it's, I probably sound like a broken record to them, you know, but it, it doesn't change, you know. I prayed about, I, you know, I pray for them. You know, just making sure that you know he stays strong and have the the strength and the you know you know for God to guide him. You know, because it the the one thing that bothered me when he's up there is like um, he's by himself. He has no family. He doesn't have an entourage. You know, I mean, I'm not. You know, people's like, oh, aren't you going to move to Philadelphia? Hell no, I'm not going to move to Philadelphia. Aren't you going to move to Cleveland? Why? It's cold as hell up there, right? And like, oh yeah, but your kid is there. Man. The first, you, you could say the first year was probably the hardest. And I always tell all the rookies that, like your first year is always the hardest because you go from training um, you, before your senior season to your senior season to training for the combine, um, to doing the combine, all the all the pro day, all the all-star games, um, to going and writing the OTAs. And the OTAs, after OTAs, you only have about two weeks left until you got training camp, and then you got the whole season. So your rookie year is definitely, it's, it tests you. It tests a lot of, a lot of people. Uh, you're 21 years old, 20, uh, how old was I? 21, 22 years old in a setting like that, you know, trying to figure it out. It was tough, and I look back and, you know, I'm, you know, damn, like the 22-year-old me was pretty damn mentally tough to be able to handle some of the shit that I was able to handle. So, um, you know, going then going to Cleveland, uh, I had a little bit more of an opportunity there because actually that's what they wanted me in the draft. Like if, if I wasn't going get, to get drafted, Cleveland was going to be a team that picked me up as an undrafted kid or undrafted free agent. And um, so I get there, learn the playbook. And next thing you know, I'm in the rotation. Like within weeks, I'm in the rotation at safety. Um, I come in on second, second and long, third down situations. Um, I was starting on all phases, especially I was punt returning. You know what I mean? Like and... <laughs> But those were hard, hard years too because we were, we were just not very good at all. Um, you know, so it was hard to stay, hard to stay motivated uh, when you're losing week after week after week, uh, especially in a you know it's a new setting, it's a new team. So you didn't really get to kind of build that relationship with those guys during training camp. Um, so it was just kind of getting your, your butt whooped and just kind of having to do it again the next week and do it again the week after that. So. Um, but the year after that, we weren't any better. We uh, we lost almost every game. I think we were like three and thirteen. No bull crap. Um, the year after that, I think we were somewhat better. We might have went six and twelve, or uh, I'm sorry, six and ten. Uh, and then the year after that, my fourth year in Cleveland was the year I got hurt. Uh, ended up lacerating my kidney week six. It was just kind of one of those one of those scary deals. Colquitt from out of his own end zone again. Stutter step comes back near side left. 45. He's got the sideline if they get a block, and they did. And it was a blindside block on Poyer. And to be honest with you, it was frightening. And Poyer is down without his helmet on and in a lot of pain. I can tell you this. It's no different than your kids. You're sitting here and watching your kid at a high school football field and your kid getting hurt at a high school, you know, game or little league or no different. You know, uh, the impact, I mean, watching it nationwide, I mean, your phone blows up and, you know, I just, Jordan, he, his pain tolerance is high. So when he's hurt, I know he's hurt, you know, and I didn't, I mean, I still, yeah, remember I was, yeah, I was really, uh, I was at, I wasn't at the game. I was here at Bubba's where I watched, yeah, where I watched the game, and of course, uh, the whole place got quiet. You know? uh, I just remember going outside, just trying to watch, you know, TV to see if I see him get up. I mean, when I first saw him get hit, all I would say like, "Get up, get up, Jordan, get up," you know. And then he did get up, and I can just see him, with the facial expression he had, and I'm like, damn, he's hurt. He's hurt. So I already knew Tony, uh, Rachel's pops was over there, so I called him, and he's like, hey, and he was like, hey, I'll, I'll stay in touch. I text Julie, and like, hey, uh, have you heard anything? He's like, no, 
All right, so, uh, you know, uh, I just talked to Tony, and he's going to go to the hospital with him. Uh, like, and he'll keep us, keep in touch. So that was hard, you know, and uh, just trying to see if, if one of us needs to fly down there. Uh, yeah, I thought my career might have been over, uh, especially when the doctor told me that I wasn't going to be able to exercise for four months. Um, and so, like, I'm like, well, I mean, damn, by the time you're able to do that, like, you're going to be so far behind everybody else. Like, it's going to be, like, it's going to be hard as fuck. I'm sorry. It's going to be hard as hell to, to catch up. Um, okay. Uh, all right. Um, and so, like, I mean, when you told me that, I just, you know, that was the first year I actually earned the starting position. Um, you know, the year before was I, a guy got hurt in training camp, so I, you know, I didn't necessarily feel like I earned it, but, you know, I was a starter. But, you know, I earned this position, and I was starting every game. And, you know, that that really kind of, like you said, it was a turning point just because I was able to really, uh, you know, if, if I look back at that moment, um, you know, it was a blessing in disguise in a sense. My, my wife was pregnant at the time, um, and she had my daughter in December. So I was able to be there for her, um, be there, you know, obviously during the birth of, of Aaliyah and, you know, and spend that time with them during, you know, during the time I was recovering. Uh, I just remember coming back off of recovery and when the doctor told me I was finally cleared and able to work out, I put 135 on the bench press and I couldn't even, I couldn't even bench it after four months of not touching a weight, not running or anything. So I was like, man, this is, this is going to be tough, dude. Um, so I just started training. I started training down there in Florida with this um, Pete Bomarito. Shout out Pete. I know you're watching. Uh, you know, and he just got, he, I mean, his facility, you know, high end facility just got me right, dude. Uh, I just worked, busting my butt to get back to, where I needed to be to have an opportunity. I got a call in February from the Bills, and they told me uh, they wanted me to come in and, and compete. Um, you know, I kind of I didn't really have any many other options, but after I looked at their roster, I, I saw I had an opportunity to possibly come in and start. So, you know, I, that off season worked extremely hard, um, and you know, it was the hardest part was just uh, was like not mentally knowing where I was at uh, throughout the whole process of me like training to get better. Like I knew I was training to get better, but I didn't know like if I was at the level that I needed to be, I guess you could say. How we doing? How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Can you read this to us? Yeah. <laughs> it says, a year ago today, on 3-13-2020, I decided to quit drinking. Not because anything special like Lent or New Year's resolution, but because I was an alcoholic. I'm writing this knowing that there are others out there like me that realize they need help too. My first step was realizing I had a drinking problem, because I did. Couldn't drink just to hang. When I drank, I had to get fucked up. I used to drink to avoid all my issues in, in life. My family, my job, my friends. When I drank, I could forget all my issues. I didn't have to deal with them face on. After we lost to Houston in 2019, I felt I didn't play the way I wanted to. And we lost in such a bad way for the next five weeks after that game, I drank every day. That's, I mean, every day, every day. Stressed out about my contract, stressed out about my family, stressed out about just life. I didn't know how to cope. I didn't know any other way to cope with it. My wife seen it firsthand, honestly, if it wasn't for her and the consistent support from my family and friends, I don't know where I'd be. I remember days she used to cry because I couldn't, I couldn't put a beer down. I 
remember not being able to play with Aaliyah because I was so intoxicated. I remember feeling thoughts in my head that would scare the hell out of me, out of sober me now. Finally decided to take a few trips to AA. My mom told me to help. Never spoken them. I realized my life's issues were not even close to others' life's issues. Those three meetings plus the support of my family, in particular my wife Rachel, I was able to change my life and see the light. Can't lie writing this, I'm embarrassed, it's shameful, but if I can overcome the struggle of alcohol, so can you. I didn't want all of you to know this about me. I'm writing this because I know others out there struggle as well. If you believe that is you, it's never too late to seek help and to let you know my DMs are always open for questions. Yeah. You know, I actually, I mean, it could start for anybody at any, at any time. For me, I think it started in college. Um, you know, I, you know, coming from here, I, you could say I was kind of sheltered. I told you earlier, parents were pretty strict. I didn't get away with a whole lot. Never really went out and partied. Um, you know, and so I kind of got to college and was a little sh culture shocked of, you know, it was, you know, I was a, I was a young, young 18 year old dude with light eyes and light skin. You know, the girls were everywhere. You know, I was on the football team and it was um, party drinking all the time. You know, it was just that's just what it was. You know, and um, at the time, I always tell people at the time, you know, you never really realize, you know. You know, at the time, like, you know, I'm drinking, I'm getting faded all the time and just waking up the next day and I'm young, I'm able to go to my workouts. But um, at the time, you're not really realizing, you know, what it's doing to your body, um, you know, physically, mentally. Um, and, and, you know, you're just drinking for fun at the time, of course. But, you know, I, I definitely believe that later on it caught up to me to where I stopped using it for fun. You know, I stopped going out with my friends and, you know, even even though it was a problem when I could just go out with my friends and get hammered and just be blacked out, that was a that was a huge problem. But I wasn't I wasn't using alcohol then like I was when I realized it was a problem. If that makes sense, uh, you know, when I when I would use it when I was stressed out about my relationships or when I used it when I was stressed out about my contract. You know, that's when I realized it was a problem. Was and I, and it, and it, honestly, I didn't even, I didn't see it for the longest time. It was like, I was just doing it. And I like, I would never even like think about like when I was drinking and I was like, damn, you got a problem until like for probably for a while, you know, I would like, I'd literally go to workouts and I'd come home and I'd, or I'd go to the store and grab a case of beer and I'd literally just chug it down in like 20 minutes, bro. Like literally just uh, 20 minutes just to get a little buzz, but like, <laughs> It's crazy. I was living. It. I mean, you know, I think if if we really look ourselves in the mirror and we get honest, um, we're all of us are aware of our shortcomings. Um, we kind of fake it to pretend that we don't have them sometimes. Just just naturally, alcohol and drugs is definitely one way to kind of numb yourself to the challenge of just being in a position like Jordan is, for crying out loud. I mean, what does he do that isn't publicly scrutinized? And, and there's so much pressure at the, uh, to be an NFL athlete and to succeed and excel and then prove yourself week after week after week after week. Um, for anybody, I think it would be so hard to publicly talk about your own demons. So, I, I mean, I'm just so proud of him for that, for being willing to, to put himself out there to expose himself like that. Um, I don't know that I would have that capability. I don't know if a lot of people would. Um, but for him to take the approach that um, this might be able to help others, um, I just, I could not be more proud of him. Well, <clears throat> I'm an alcoholic. And when I was mayor of this town, I got a drunk driving ticket, and that is extremely embarrassing. You're embarrassed with yourself, you let the community down, you let everyone down. And so I've gone now 15 years and eight months without having any drinks of alcohol. And so, in my opinion, most people can drink alcohol, and they can handle it, and they, it's fine who cares? There's some of us that can't, and I'm one of them. 
And it sounds like Jordan, I haven't talked to him about this specifically, sounds like he thinks that maybe he's in the boat with me. And I really respect him because it's not easy. And I want to repeat something, it's embarrassing. It is embarrassing to be an alcoholic and it is embarrassing to get a drunk driving ticket. And for Jordan to come out publicly, nationally, internationally, and say, I want you to know, I'm an alcoholic, I can't drink. It's huge, because there's a lot of people who will follow that example. I just didn't know how to, there was so much that was thrown at me. And I had, I had like, People come from this way. I had, you know, this. I finally started seeing success. Like I started, you know, people wanted to be, people wanted to be part of my life, and I didn't know how to, you know, I didn't know how to handle it. I didn't know how to, you know, be around in social settings, um, you know, and conversate with people and uh, and like sober. It takes a lot of guts to to do something like that, to be vulnerable like that, on that high, like on that high of a stage to admit that you had a problem and that you're working on it, it, it just takes guts, you know? And for him to, you know, speak out about those struggles, it's, it's something that helps a lot of people out, you know? It's, you're able to connect with him, see him at a more human level, you know? Because with these athletes, it's all you see is the good stuff on the field. You don't know what they're going through. And you know, with mental health, actually you know getting the recognition that it needs to especially with professional athletes like it's easy for you and me to just sit back on twitter and be like this guy get it together you know what i mean and it's like they see that the pressure of of having to perform and week in and week out you're banged up and you're you know there's, everyone's gonna say you're not doing good enough it, dude. And I started. I started just thinking that drinking would take away all of my my bad thoughts and all of. I wouldn't have to worry about. But I think worrying. I think worrying is a good word because I worried a lot about a lot of stuff, you know. And you know, when I drink, I just stop worrying. You know, if I played bad, I would drink, and I would just stop worrying about how I played. You know, and it just became very extremely unhealthy um, for. It's probably good. I mean, it's obviously since college, you know, but you know, like very extreme, like three years, probably like pretty bad. I remember when I first read that post, um, I read through it and I was, I, I was kind of shocked, you know? Like one, I never knew that that was a problem that he was dealing with. Um, two, the fact that who he is and he has the confidence to go talk about that and share his stories with others and hoping that it's going to touch somebody is, I don't know, it, it's something special. Like I said, I, I coach and I work with kids and I'm trying to tell these kids like, hey, he, don't get me wrong, I know you guys want to have your fun, but there's a bigger picture to what you're doing. And the fact that an NFL superstar is going through the same problems that a normal human being, not I don't say normal human being, but your average citizen goes through and being able to relate those two and everybody being on that same way like this, I, 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 was, I was pretty amazed by the him being able to go out there and just let the world know what's going on. And I don't want to say it was like every single day, but you know, I just had, I knew I couldn't go out and party without getting just blacked out. My wife would hate it, um, you know, and, and like I said, she's been my strongest supporter. She's been my biggest supporter throughout this whole thing. Cause um, you know, she told me, she tells me all the time how proud she is of me for, you know, now, now it's been about a year and a half since I stopped drinking, since I've had my last drink. Uh, but you know, she she tells me, you know, the person I am now is the person that she saw me, who she, you know, the person that she wanted to marry, you know, and and she saw it in me. People look up to him, and when you make a decision like that, they're they're gonna want to follow. And um, as you see in the world today in sports, they're using that as their platform, and um, for the position that he's in, to be able to make a positive impact on others. I, I think that it's a tremendous thing that he's done. And, you know, he's inspiring to so many. So I, I have no, no doubt that it'll have such a positive impact on people. For whatever struggles uh, that he was going through, I mean, it's, it's awesome to see that he's buried them. You know, and, 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 you know, he's obviously uh, any, any tough situation, throw it in his face, uh, you know, it's, 
know, it's over and done with. He'll take care of it, and just like you would with any kind of any any kind of adversity thrown at that guy. So, well, first of all, very proud um, that he took ownership of it. I sent him a text the other day. It's like, man, you doing that to me? It's a, it's a. He's just showing your maturity level. Anytime, you know, because you, even as an adult, right? You take ownership of your, of whatever you're going through and your behavior, and that's that's big. It's, it's owning it, and then where do you go from there? You know, and um, before he even came out, I, so he would text me, like, you know, we have these little texts back and forth. He would text me like dates, like '99 or, you know, 98, and I'm like, send him a text back, like, question mark, you know, like, what the heck is this? So I finally called him, like, what What are these numbers you sending me? Oh, like, that's all, that's how many days that I have not drink. Like, oh, yeah, we talked about it a little bit, you know, and uh, I was just happy that he was able to, uh, I believe he talked to his mom about it, you know, and mom suggested for him to you know reach out so uh, and I'm glad that he he did you know and uh, so when he texts me and I text him back it's like well I text him back my number you know because uh, I think we spoke about it, it was like dude I stopped drinking in January 15th right after you guys lost the playoff game He's like, oh, you know, we had that conversation about it, and they're like, oh, yeah, I didn't know that. Like, yeah, I just, it's like I'm getting old, man. It takes a lot, you know, it, it takes a lot for me to recover if I'm having, you know, some drinks. You know, I'm too dang old for that. But, you know, I didn't know how deep, uh, you know, the struggles he had with it as far as, and I'm very proud of him for, you know, taking it, owning it and, um, so when he, I was really surprised when he, you know, he's like, I didn't even know. I was just making a post, you know, and then I, I saw his post and next thing I know, I'm looking at all the news and it's like all over. You know, I, get, it, I guess it's what you call it, it went viral. Yeah, I just want to continue to be a positive light just for her, you know, because I know, like I said, she's, she's seen both sides, dude. She's seen the bad side of me and she's seen, you know, the me now. And, you know, I just want to continue to be that positive light, not like I said, for her, but, you know, for everybody else that, you know, reads the story, listens to the story, sees the story, and, you know, they, they're going through some similar issues. This is such a great event. This is year one, at least at the golf, yeah. but you couldn't have asked for better weather. Couldn't ask for better weather. Couldn't ask for better turnout, man. Uh, you know, thank you guys for coming through and helping out with this. It's been a, it's been a fun day. When Phileo came to me and said, Ronnie, uh, would you be interested in this? I said, sure, I'll play. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I see you back there, <laughs> big man. And uh, I tell you, the, the neat part about what we have here in a small community is, yes, I will. I will help. I will do, tell me what I need to do. I will do this. And, uh, you know, I think somebody like Jordan, he learned a little bit of that as he came through the Astoria system. And everything he's done, everybody that's a, that's a part of Astoria or even the, the Clatsop County and it's just, just a greater area have kind of adopted Jordan as their own. And we all root for him. And uh, we wish you the very, very best. Jordan, you have turned into a wonderful person. We wish you nothing but the best. Thank you very much. Please welcome to the podium, Jordan Poyer. This was amazing. Uh, hope you guys had a great time today. Uh, you guys have a great time today? Oh, okay. yeah. uh, like, like Coach Luke said, man, thank you to everybody that, 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 helped, that was a part of the John. Uh, I mean, I know it was a short amount of time, dude. Um, you know, there, there's so much uncertainty in the world right now. I wasn't sure how, to, how I was going to be able to get a kid's camp and 
and, and you know I wasn't even sure if I was gonna be able to come back to Oregon but uh, you know once I realized kind of my schedule I you know I, I've been golfing this past year and playing against my dad quite a bit I was you know popped up in my head and I'm like, hey pops you know man maybe we can get the community together try to do a little golf tournament golf out and something you know and um, you know, kind of the, the ball just started rolling after that. You know, he told me, you know, like, let's get band news and beverages. He said they were they were hopping on. Uh, Ronnie, uh, dang, dang guy was with the damn car on the edge. Of the <laughs> <laughs> like what? You know, who, who? Nobody does that, man. And, and that's one thing that I love about this community. Like Ronnie said, man, it's like, you know, I so said we get it out here. You know, everybody, it, it's like everybody wants to help everybody. Everybody wants to. You know, this community is special, and, uh, and that's why I continue to come back here. Um, you know, I just want to be an inspiration to the young kids in the, in the, in the community. Um, just to see, you know, I, I, ran, I ran up and down these streets just like they did. You know, I, I, was, I was here golfing. Uh, I wasn't golfing. I was working on the board. <laughs> All right. If you uh, need to get another drink to help you lift your wallet. Off at $800. 19's in, 19 dollars 50 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 See, the C on the jersey just made it even, you know what I mean? Like, I worked hard to get that shit right there. He's happy that he got it. I know. He definitely did. It's crazy. It's surreal. Uh, think about, you know, these are the places I grew up, places I stomped around, ran around, and, you know, somebody here buying my jersey for over $10,000 is crazy. But, you know, all for a good cause, man. Just trying to raise money for the community, raise money for the school. Uh, just trying to find ways to give back to the best I can to the community that raised me. It's a pretty special, special experience. It's gonna be fun. You know, I'm gonna try to make it fun for the kids too. I'm excited to be in the story today. I uh, appreciate Jordan inviting me here to his experience. Uh, never been in a story before too, so I'm excited to kind of just be, be one with the community and him and just have a good time out there. Today. And you can't mess with my moves, I swear And hey, you know I got this, I'm ready to rock this Who's on top of this? Not you, put my team face on it Homie, I do what I do, do you? I showed you once, that's cool, but look what I do Coming back for another round <laughs> Yeah, I'm back for another round Coming back for another round Let's go! He started here. He worked his ass off. You work your ass off. There is a chance that you could be there one day. You know, I mean, sure, he was <laughs> gifted as hell. You know, as athletic as hell, that work ethic that he's, he's portraying here that kids now can see. I've kind of shown kids around here too that, like, hey, if you really do put your nose to it and you work and you grind, you bust your butt, you give up things that you don't want to give up. I mean, we got kids now that are thinking like, hey, if he did it, why can't I do it? And if, even if they don't make it, so be it. It's the fact of you, you really did put your best effort forward and you, you try to push for your goals. And if you fell a little short, there, there's nothing wrong with that. And he, he's, he's led by example and if not more. And even when he has fallen short, he, he's gotten right back up, no matter if it's a goal on the field or off the field. The dude is one of the hardest workers um, that I've come across, so. I'm going 90. Last year or the year before, people were kind of like nationally trying to be like, kind of saying that Jordan's clearly one of the best guys in the business of what he does on the planet. And it is like so evident now as time goes on, you know, I mean, he's like, he's, I don't want to say, is this prime to come? You know, I don't even know if he's in his prime yet. You know, he's so good at what he does, and and, and uh, I mean, and he's just he's you know kicked a problem that he has. And I mean, the sky's the limit for the guy right now, right? Uh, 
Um, honestly, man, I'm I'm speechless. Uh, this turnout right here, this is way more than I expected. Uh, this is awesome. I just wanted my main goal. I just wanted to come out and get the community together um, and bring the community together and, and show face out here. I understand. I never forgot where I came from, man. I've been out here in these streets, running around in these streets since I was five years old, man. Uh, thank you to everybody uh, to, that helped set this apart, pops. You know, big, big time help, man. Thank you so much. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. All the fathers out there, too. Uh, oh, no. Ronnie, 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 man, do the messages, man. I know there's a ton more that, that I'm missing off the top of my head, but my head is actually sitting right now because this is absolutely crazy, you know. I never would have thought, you know, a day like this would come where, you know, I come back and people would just come watch me work out, man. I mean, my head is just crazy to me. Sold the jersey yesterday for $10,000. I mean, holy Jesus. I mean, that's just crazy to me, you know. I mean, I never would have thought in the, being here, so I'm so blessed and so thankful to be here in front of you guys. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, a, lot, a lot of you know, uh, if you don't know, uh, heard about my story. Uh, going through a lot of trouble in life, man. Alcohol played the best, you know, had the best of me. Uh, I was going through a lot. Uh, no excuse at all, but I uh, found a way to get out of it. Uh, you know, I've been sober for a year and a half now. Uh, and, uh, I really just changed my life, uh, supporting my wife, my beautiful daughter, she's four years old. They couldn't be out here with me this weekend, but you know, the hair spirit, all the way to you guys right now, because I think we're on live right now. So um, thank you to my wife, I know you're watching, appreciate you. She's a big reason why I'm here right now, so I really thank you, thank you very much, I appreciate that. And uh, that's it, man. I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. It's always a blessing to tell people where I'm from, and they're asking, like, oh, where's that story? And I'm just like, man, you look at a map on the corner, you just look at the top left of the uh, of Oregon. That's where our story is, man. Not a lot of people know about it, but it's a hidden gem. A lot of great people out here, a lot of great people from here. Kids, yeah, go chase your dreams, man. Go chase your dreams no matter what it is. You know, I don't care if you want to be an athlete, you want to be a doctor, if you want to be a, a whatever it is, man. Don't tell nobody, don't tell anybody to tell you you can't do something. You know, that's, that was one of my biggest assets, I feel like, is. You know, every time somebody told me I couldn't do something, every time somebody told me I wasn't good enough, I just wanted to say, you know, eh. you know, you know what I wanted to say. You know, I can't really say it, but you know, I just wanted to prove people wrong. That's been my, that's been my goal my whole life to just continue to prove people wrong, continue to be the light. You know, I just want to continue to be the inspiration. All you young kids here, and let you know, man, you can, you can be right here one of these days too. So thank you again, everybody, for coming out. Hey, uh, it, I'm sorry. It's uh, I don't want to be all I don't want to be all mushy. <laughs> don't want to be all mushy, you know. I just uh, I mean, here he is coming back to to help support us. So you know, in in the world of uh, actions speak louder than words, you know. That's, uh, so I would, I, he knows how much I appreciate him. I'm able, I, I feel like I've communicated that. And, um, but yeah, I, there, yeah. And I've even, yeah. <laughs> I almost feel like he's one of my kids. I kind of adopt athletes when I coach them, but somehow or other the, the emotional connection I made to him um, was all in, you know, because he gave me an all in. So there was no reason not to reciprocate. So it's it's kind of like that's my guy. Um, so when he's excelling, um, it's twofold. I'm super proud of him. And then I'm just praying, keep it in perspective, keep the course. And one thing that I think sums Jordan up is after the golf tournament I had a chance just to have breakfast with him we just met down on the waterfront in Astoria sat there for about an hour and a half and had breakfast and just talked like this and at the end of that it's like you know God, how, how good is it to just be able to still relate to this guy that seemingly can have all that fame going and have a healthy perspective about it. So I'm just praying he keeps that healthy perspective. He's a good dad, he's a good husband, he's a good friend, he's a good ambassador. And uh, and 
all the better if he's excelling at the NFL level to give credibility to the voice that is talking to people about really important and hard stuff right now. Hey boy, I just want to tell you I'm very proud of you. Uh, thank you for this opportunity, uh, for this Father's Day documentary, uh, coming here for Father's Day weekend. Uh, people are still talking about it. I am proud of the fact that you have you grown up to be a a, a man um, knowing that you are able to uh, help others. Uh, and I appreciate that. I appreciate the fact that you're here every whenever you can to help out, to give back to the community. Uh, people still talking about the tournament, the golf tournament, and I think you, people are looking forward to um, another golf tournament. And kids are looking forward to uh, a camp. Um, I'm kind of self-promoting all this stuff, but <laughs> you know, for you, just to give you, just dropping the seed here, but I love you very much, and I'll always be here for you. Good luck to you. May God continue to guide you in your path, and um, I love you very much. And uh, go Bills, go number 21.